Hello! Let's build some scorpion legs. We're also going to talk about joints, and I'm going to teach you some cool methods of creating joints that don't suck. But first we have to create a scorpion leg. So uh, let's get to it. I added a little bit of a scorpion face just to give us an indication of what the heck the face is. Uh, it's not permanent, it's just something I threw together in two or three minutes. Here's a circle. So the circle has way too many verts. We do not need anywhere near that many verts. Let's go with eight. Eight's a good number. And let's go with 0.15 for the size. Enter in, rotate Y90. And let's move this to some point on there. That'll do. And then let's start to build. Yeah, that'll do. So the first joint, or first area rather, is a shoulder. You can see here we've got this shoulder meat, and then we've got this extended uh, section. There is no joint here, just so you're aware. This is a welded carapace, there's no joint. But we're going to start with the shoulder and then we'll move on. So the shoulder has a bulge in it. So the easiest way to do that, we're going to move this out from, from the scale, from the carapace for the, for the, for the second. And uh, we're going to create the joint just by rotating rotating and moving up and we'll shrink it down a little bit I'll go here shroom, 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 shroom. there that's more or less right it looks a little bit too solid there so let's just smooth it down and expand it a little bit there we are and you can modify this however you would like um, there's no uh, as I, for, for something that's never going to be animated, because this cannot bend, there's no right or wrong way to build it. Well, I mean, there are wrong ways, but you have to really try. The shoulder then comes out into a welded joint, which looks like this. Oh. Except that the weld is not perfect, so it's like this. And then we have a long, long segment, like so. Now this segment is not actually straight, or it's not actually undifferentiated. If we look at it, there are bulges and such, but we're going to go ahead and deal with those later, except for this one here, which is actually kind of important to the structure of the leg. So we're going to go ahead and add that in, and it's just like this. The leg is very slightly smaller at the tip, so there. So now we're going to add in our very first joint, which we're going to do by leaving a gap like this. And then we have this muscular area which is about this big. Now if you have ever seen a, uh, if you've ever eaten lobster, you'll be familiar with how this should look. It's not like round, it's not like this. Instead, it's significantly uh, larger on the y-axis, or the z-axis in Blender, uh, than it is on any of the others. So, do it like this. There. And if we look at our reference, eh, I made it a little bit too beefy. So we'll just pull it back in just a touch here. But again, since we're not building an actual emperor scorpion, it's okay if it's not quite the right shape. And then we have another joint, which again will just be a oh, come on. Just be a gap like this. And then we have the long leg section here, which is just where it dwindles down to the foot. So, bring it out, shrink it down. Now this section has a bulge. So we're going to go ahead and add in that bulge. It's like this. More or less right. It doesn't really have to be perfect. And then we've got the foot. So the foot, we're going to put another joint in. And then we're going to extend it for the foot. And then they've got these little pronged toes. Um, and there's a lot of ways to try and create pronged toes. We're going to do it using the simplest way I know. Uh, which is just to... Sorry. I just want to create faces here, but it's not letting me click in the way I'm used to. There we are. Notice that we have some triangles there. Uh, we can resolve that later if we want, but I don't really care enough.
These are actually hooks, so just put in some hooks here, scale Y, move it out. If it's noisy in the background, I apologize, but it's been noisy uh, for hours, and it's not planning on stopping anytime soon. So this leg is too large. We're just going to scale it all down, and then we're going to move it over. All right, so there is our leg. It looks more or less correct, but it's not bent or anything. Let's go ahead and test out how it looks when we animate it. And the way we do that is we add in a bone. When we edit the bone, we need to align everything up, but we don't. We want to have a shoulder joint, so we're not going to bring it off of the centerpiece. Uh, but there are there's a lot of ways we could do this, but I think that it'll work fine doing it like this. So we're just going to grab it, and then we're going to extend it over into this joint, um, and then we're going to extend it over into this joint, and then we're going to extend it down into this joint, and then we're going to extend it out into the tip. There we go. But it's not in the right spot, so drag it back. Normally when I do bones, I'm pretty careful to uh, make sure that the bones are all um, hmm. I lost track of where the rendering was, so I'll just leave it like this. Oh, there it is. Uh, wireframe and x-ray. So you can see that this bone kind of floats. Um, if that really bothers you, you can joint it a little bit more, but I don't think it's going to matter. So to hook this up, we click here, and then we shift right click here, we hit control P, and automatic weights. And now, when we select the bone, and go into pose mode, we can pose it. Yay! So let's take a look at this joint. You can see that what we've got here is not very good. Uh, there isn't a whole lot of skewing. Uh, you can sometimes get really bad skewing, but in this case it's not the skewing that's bothersome. It's just the fact that the joint doesn't work right. The topology's wrong. Uh, we end up having some folding problems on the bottom, and the top doesn't have any kind of real feeling like there's mass inside. So this is what we this is what we call a collapsing joint. It's not very good. You may be familiar with it if you've ever looked at hip joints in a badly rigged human model. <coughs> They do just like this, and the, and the legs don't look right. Uh, some of them are even worse than that, and they get skewing as well. We, we won't even go into that. But believe it or not, the answer is these guys in the middle. These faces down here need to compress inwards. I'm making hand gestures because I'm sure you can see that. And these need to f flow outwards. But if there is a continuous string, they, uh, they skew instead. So I'm going to teach you the trick here. This is an important trick if you're making low poly joints. So pay attention. These two verts right in the middle, you merge them at the center. And you do the same for the verts on the other side. And then, just to make sure that when you expand, you get a good expansion, you cut. Okay? Now when you're done with that, there's one, there are two more steps that you need to do. One of them is that you need to reset the armature you can't have the same. You've changed the mesh. You have to re, re uh, you have to reassociate it. The other thing you need to do is you need to move this ball. Uh, I guess we need to go to edit mode directly into the center of the points that you just merged. Okay. So now let's go ahead and create that armature again. Uh, control P with automatic weights and go into pose mode. And now when we bend it, you can see how that gives a much better feeling. There's no longer a feeling of it being folded over awkwardly. Now there's still some stretching here and there, and this is good for human joints or for animal joints, for living joints, and this is a really, really great technique. So I hope you memorized it. Um, this works for all joints, and as you can see, we don't even have a particularly bad creasing problem, even when we're jointed down like 120 degrees. It still works fine. If we were to go into this and make it smooth, um, smooth it please you can see that it doesn't have a particularly nasty crease either. So this is an excellent way to do joints. And if you need the joint to be a different shape, you can move these points around and reshape it. All of that said, this is not the method we're going to be using for our scorpion legs. Now why is that? Well that's because the scorpion legs are made out of, I, I don't know whether it's pronounced kitten or chitin or chitin, they're made out of bone. And uh, that means that we have a very, very different kind of joint. Instead of having this kind of uh, folding joint, what we have is we have an extending joint. Um, to go ahead and show you exactly what that means, 
what we're going to do is we're going to add another crease in here and uh, we're going to bring it over um, you know I actually changed my mind we do actually need this um, nope that wasn't what I wanted. we do actually need this uh, center crease I, uh, I undid that by accident but we have the same we have the same basic issue where the center crease needs to exist uh, but it's actually going to be back here and then when we create this crease here this is not going to be the same crease that that we created before instead what we need to do is we need to cut so we're going to cut if you hold down control you can cut to the middle of each line hit space and then we've got a good cut now what are we going to do with this well, we're going to bring it kind of bring it down and back now you might be wondering what are you doing why are you doing that you're so weird well the answer is that this sort of joint doesn't have a um, it doesn't have skin the same way that we do and it doesn't have muscle the same way that we do instead when these joints unfold they actually have a set of uh, skin underneath the exoskeleton that comes out and stretches so what I've done is I've created this skin underneath the exoskeleton and now I've also got this joint here and we can actually do the exact same thing if we would like just control uh, click and then control So, yeah. This one doesn't have the same roll though, because this one won't be coming out. Instead, what the roll of this one is, is it's to make it clear that we have an actual joint. Now, this is a very primitive way to do it. Um, if we wanted to do it with a lot more detail work, we would actually make this here overlap so that there was an interlocking joint. But if we look at the model, you can see that we've got that same jointing here. See that? So, I'm creating the same basic shape. And underneath, I would like to have that same feeling, even though we don't need it for the purposes of animation. We do need it for the purposes of not looking terrible. Oh, that was wrong. Damn. Unfortunately, pressing Control Z does not undo part of a cut. It only doesn't undoes the whole cut. Okay, so, are. so these three, we will just bring back, or bring forward rather, to create the same. Uh, no, back. I'm looking at it from the other direction, which I wasn't really expecting, to create the same feeling of it being a crease. Yeah, that'll do. So now what happens is we need to, uh, once again, uh, redo all of this. So Alt-R will undo any rotations that you've had applied. And then we need to delete the armature, Shift, right-click, Control p with automatic weights. And now let's take a look and see how it works. Well, you can see that it sort of works, but we don't have the same feel. And the reason for that is because we have to repaint this a little bit. So when we repaint it, I'm going to fold it so that it's folded in the way I want it to be folded. And then I'm going to go into vertex paint mode, or weight paint mode. And we can look and see exactly what needs to be painted and what can't be painted. Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to change it so that we are auto-normalized, because that way we won't have to worry about the paint jobs uh, screwing up, uh, the weighting getting screwed up. And just paint, and you can see how this will change what is uh, which bone it's attached to, and it will also change what the animation looks like. If you hit Z, you can see it a little bit more clearly. What we need to do is select this bone, and then select in here. So we need to have a very, very, very tiny, tiny brush. And we're just going to paint these guys. Sorry for the noise, but uh, afraid that I don't really have much of an option here. All right, so there we've gotten painted these guys, and we painted these guys, and we painted these guys. There we go. So now, when we go back out into object mode here, uh, Z, there it is, and we select this, and we can animate this, you can see how what happens is it folds out like a lever, which isn't quite right. So what we actually need to do is uh, weight paint it just a little bit, up here. We just need a touch, so we're going to make the weight, how about 0.3-ish. And because we're auto-normalizing, that will reduce the weight on the other bone. And that should let it so that it's no longer, lo let it look like it's no longer a lever, and it will now be a, um, a more of a proper feel to it. So let's go ahead and see how that works. Hmm, it could use a little bit more work, but the idea is there. Now, the way it can probably be a little bit better is if we go in here and we actually move these joints. 
and we can move them down and in like so without changing the weight painting. I select this, we rotate it, and eh, that looks kind of right. We get some stretch stretching here. I would like to have it be a little bit better. I think what I need to do is reduce the paint job a little bit more. So let's go in to an angle where it looks terrible, and then we'll weight paint it. And what we have here is it's just not quite right. So let's try it at 0.5. Accidentally hit too many verts there. It's hard to paint it with this. There, let's go like this. There, now we can actually see it. There we are. Uh, since I'm painting it with 0.5, it doesn't matter which bone I'm painting it on because if it's normalized, then 0.5 will be 0.5 regardless. All right, and you can see how that looks right. All right, let's take a look at that without the uh, weight painting colors. There you go. And that actually looks a lot like a lot more like a scorpion's leg actually ought to look. We can improve we can improve it just a touch more by going back into weight painting mode. And over here, on this side, we want to just give it a little bit of a brushing. Now what does that accomplish? Well, that means that when we bend, that will stretch. See? So we have a proper stretching. Now this is not how a human joint works, and you do not want to use this for any kind of animal that has, you know, meat. But the other issue we're seeing, and I'm just being an idiot, I totally forgot. I was wondering why it looked bad. I was like, I, I, I've done this before. Why does it look so awful? Uh, the reason it still looks awful is because I forgot the cardinal rule. This ball has to be on the joint, put to, uh, the jointed part. So here, that ought to fix it. All right, now we're going to look at it more properly here. All right, that's how it should look. Although I changed the weight painting in an effort to make it look right the other way, so now we got to change it back. <laughs> so let's bring our weight up to 0.8. Yeah, that's how it should look. That was so annoying. <sighs> Never forget the basics, right? So that is how our scorpion joints will look. Now we do have to repeat that process for each of the other joints, except that uh, the foot joint will just will just flub it. Uh, we don't really care about the foot joint at the moment. We can work on it later. But this joint has this, the exact same setup. So... Um, we have a slight slight difficulty here in that this is not straight. You can see how it's actually uh, offset slightly. Well, I think the thing to do is to make it straight, so let's go ahead and do that. And we don't have the joint right on the right spot, so let's bring this in. There we go. Yeah, that little. It's vibrating because I'm going in and out of edit mode and there's a slight difference in the joint setup. So this has to be merged in here, but rather than merging at center, we're going to merge at last. And over here, merge at last. Come on. There we go. And once again, we need to cut. Now there are a lot of ways to cut, and in the previous one I did manual cuts. In this one I'm going to do automatic cuts. Oh, but you can see that that screws it up. So let's connect these guys here. Keep cutting. Come on, I'm hitting control. There we are. Now is the point when I double check and make sure that I did not screw this up. Yeah, there is a joint there. Good. Just making sure. So as before, this guy should be tucked down inside, but you know what? I'm actually going to do the tucking down inside in a little bit. First I'm going to uh, bind... Oop, too many pieces of, of... First I'm going to bind the bone, and the reason for that is because it's a little bit easier to adjust that when it's being bound on the outside rather than on the inside. Uh, I can click it easier. So, to make that point, 
super clear. Let's drag this back because that way the automatic weighting will be right. All right. So we could clear the uh, clear the paint, clear the weighting entirely, and that's what I was sort of in planning on doing. But then I realized that we would have to reweight paint the other joint, and that sounds annoying. So let's not. Uh, let's go ahead and weight paint 0.8 again. That'll do. This is blue. That's fine. That's all fine. This looks great. That's not red for some reason. Let's make it red. Probably because it didn't start auto-normalized. That's fine. This should also be red. There we go. I wonder what that skeletal point is. Oh, I guess it doesn't matter. This one in the middle does not matter because it's kind of attached to both bones. Um, the the both, both bones lever there, so there shouldn't be any significant difference. Let's go ahead and rotate this, see if it works. Okay, so now we just go back into object mode and edit this, and then we pull these into the right spots, because right now they aren't in the right spots. There we go. There we go. You can see that this has a couple of small issues. One of them is that this joint down here is too uh, restrictive. So let's bring it in. And the other one of which is that this still folds out funny. So uh, if it folds out funny, you just keep adjusting it until it doesn't fold out funny anymore. There we go. We're still going to have problems with that folding out. Um, just the nature of it being a carapace means that uh, you can't fold it further than the carapace would allow. So we have a lot of options as to whether or not we want to keep adjusting it, whether or not we want to change exactly where the joint is, because if we lower it a little bit, that'll be less of an issue. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. I'll show you right now. So right now, if we, uh, if we move this joint here, you can see how at the bottom it folds over itself. So what happens if we take this joint and we move it down? Uh, let's make sure that we are in the right spot here. Well, first off, if we move it down, uh, we're going to end up skewing the rest of these bones, but that's okay, we don't care. So let's move it down to here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to move the other half of the joint, that is the, the actual mesh, grab it and move it onto the same spot, like so. And if you look at the scorpion, this is actually close to what it actually does. Uh, the, the joint here is actually much lower than the halfway mark. I don't know if you can see that very clearly. And it's for the same reason. Uh, also, their joint is shaped a little bit differently than ours because they have uh, a surface like this, which would work great too. So let's go ahead and see how that ends up looking when we try and animate it. Ah, beautiful. We still have a problem where it impacts, but the problem is much less significant. We can go further without it impacting, and even if we do over-impact, it doesn't look nearly as bad. I would call that a win. Seems to be fine. And for the foot, we'll just leave it like that. Who cares? So this has not been properly um, arranged in any kind of... Uh, significant way. We don't have any UV mapping. Um, we don't have, we haven't duplicated it and given this thing eight legs, uh, but it has been 20 minutes and I think that's plenty long. I wanted to teach you a little bit about joints, so I've showed you a very, very, very reliable low poly joint, and I have also showed you a very, very weird joint that you would only ever use on something like this. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you uh, uh, liked those joints. If you have joints of your own that you like, topologies of your own, feel free to post videos or whatever. Uh, and see you next time.